Hello, 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 and happy Sunday to all of my Virgos. This is Queen Amon Ra coming to you with a very special reading on today. Hopefully you all are having a fantastic day, Virgos. But then again, I know you are because that's the intention you set. Let's get right into your reading, Virgos. We're going to make this short and sweet. Because as I'm shuffling the cards, uh, messages are coming through to me for you all. But here we have the Light Sears Tarot deck by Chris Ann. These cards are the Sacred Self-Care Oracle deck by Jill Pyle. We have four planets that's retrograde currently. Uh, Mercury is going... Mercury is going station direct on Tuesday. So, only a few more days from Mercury. But right now, currently, Sunday, we have four planets that are retrograde. That is Jupiter, that's Saturn, that's Mercury, and Pluto are retrograde. Yes, so we're going to talk about that. And we're going to talk about the fact that you are headed in the right direction. A lot of people just need confirmation that they're headed in the right direction. Yeah, things will seem like... <clears throat> they might not be moving fast enough or whatever, but you're headed in the right direction, Virgo. So I want to assure you of that. So keep going. Keep moving forward. Let's get into it. Most High God in the universe, please give me a special reading for my wonderful Virgos. As it relates to every area of their life, specifically in areas of power and intellect, money and wealth, creativity and emotions, and spirituality and where they need to take action. Virgos. I want you to say I'm a Virgo. I'm very intelligent. You get to remind yourself of this when you are starting to overthink things or you're starting to start judge or um, criticize or move slow or, um, or um, question everything. You got to remember how intelligent you really, really are, that you are analytical, very honest, reliable, a perfectionist, loyal, kind, hardworking Yes, and very practical gods and goddesses. Yes. When I talk about being a god, I'm talking about being a creator. A creator is a person or thing that brings something into existence. Right? So when I say that you are a god or say, say that I am a god, meaning that I'm not trying to be your god. I am my God. I can bring into existence the life that I want. So if I want to bring peace into my life, I can create that. If I don't want to overthink anything, I can bring balance into my own life. You are a creator. What are you going to do with the time? What are you going to create in your time? You can create money. You can create currency. You can create stability. You can create a uh, soul tribe. Yes. Uh-huh. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. Mm, mm, mm. Yes, this is nice, very nice. Like I said, you can create legacy wealth because you are a creator. What are you going to do with your time? I mentioned a little bit about that on the last reading, but I don't want you all to overthink. So the energy that I'm getting from this is that you all are really starting to balance your energy out. So you're not overthinking. Your ruling planet is retrograde right now, and it is retrograde until Tuesday, the 22nd. So... Get ready for legacy wealth. You all are building your legacy right now. It's happening. It's already happening. I see some of you, like I said, celebrating outside of a house, whether you're refinancing your house, whether you're purchasing a new house, moving or whatever, but I see you celebrating outside of a building. Congratulations, Virgo. Congratulations. The sun card is attached to Leo. It's Leo's ruling planet, right? So a lot of you all may have Leo in your chart, but you want to tap into that fire or you may be influenced by a Leo to some degree, even if your experience with a Leo was a bad one. Recognize this. Every sign has um, the ability to vibrate high and to uh, the ability to vibrate low, right? So even if you came in contact with a Leo and you didn't have the best experience with a Leo, you, your spirit was still able to glean from the high frequency of a Leo. And what I mean by that is you're starting to realize that, yes, you are very caring. And I'm telling you the, the characteristics of a high vibrating Leo, not low vibrating. High vibrating Leos are caring. They know that they live a great life. They're very optimistic. They're natural leaders. They're kind and protective, very loyal, honest, just like you are very vivacious 
and a whole host of other wonderful things. On top of that, they are very funny, they're humorous, they're very creative, a lot of things, right? So you're tapping fully into that fire in yourself and you're literally living your best lives, right? Not only is this also a sun sign, a fire sign, right? So some of those relationships that you had in the past, you decided, hey, I choose to be happy. I am a creator. I'm creating space for only things that keep me high vibrational. Some of you all have come through you know, with challenging, you have had challenging relationships in the past where it almost felt like it sucked the air out of you, right? The relationship may have sucked the air out of you, but you also got to remember, what did you learn from that relationship? What did you learn from the relationship? Every sign has to go into a relationship. When, when you enter into a relationship with another sign, instead of saying, oh my God, I don't like that sign. I don't get along with that sign. I don't get along with that sign. What is it that that person or that spirit, actually the spirit, not the person, what is this, what is the spirit going to teach your spirit and vice versa? What, what is the exchange going to be? What am I going to learn? So if you were in contact with it or had any interactions with an air sign that's an Aquarius, Gemini, Libra, what did you gain from those signs? Do those signs snatch the air back out quickly of the relationship that doesn't serve their highest purpose? That may be a, a challenge for someone who is an over-nurturer. You all are nurturers by default, but you're learning how to remove the air from relationships, again, that don't serve your highest purpose. So in the past, it may have been a challenge to be in a relationship with an Aquarius, a Gemini, or Libra, or somebody who had that in their chart. But when you learn from their highest frequency, hey, they sometimes they pull out real quick They because they're air signs. They cut the air supply off real quick. And for some people, that may seem cool, I mean, uh, harsh and cold. But at the same time, it's keeping your energy balanced out. So, yes, you got to look at the highest in every single sign. I can't think of one sign that I don't like. I'm serious. I can't think of one sign that I don't like. When you learn when people look like at their highest frequency, then you learn, what can I learn from this sign? Really, what, what really can I learn from this sign? Even if I was on the receiving end of something, them vibrating low, what did I learn from that about myself? Yes, then we have the world card, which is Saturn, which is also retrograde right now. This being retrograde is really encouraging you to focus on your ambition because Saturn is a planet of ambition. So you want to focus on your long-term goals moving forward. What is it that you want to do? Like what is it? What are your long-term goals moving forward? What is it that you're really, really good at? And a lot of people want Virgos on their team because you all are good at many different things. You're very smart, very intelligent. Again, speaking to your highest vibration. So you really don't have, a, you don't really have to overthink anything. <clears throat> Excuse me. Almost every single Virgo that I've seen in action, and I'm talking about celebrities and people who are not that known to the rest of the world, because celebrities are just people who are celebrated really by the masses. It doesn't mean that they're any different than you are except what they choose to do with their time, like how how they use their time, right? But every Virgo that I've, almost every Virgo that I've come in contact, the ones that are balanced out, um, don't overthink anything. They're just like, you know what? I know I did it right the first time. I know I did a great job the first time because of the, by default, how analytical you all are, you're just doing it. And for the people who don't appreciate it, a lot of, okay, let's say, for instance, you're on a job, you're working a job, and you do something. Nine times out of ten, people are going to love the job, unless they are insecure. And, I, and, and what I mean by that, let's say you're working in an organization and you work for a manager who is like, wow, they hired you for the fact that you are very, very clear, very, very meticulous and get the job done, Right? They may, some because I'm getting that somebody's worked on a job where a manager was like, oh my God, this person can actually easily slip in and take my job, right? Unfortunately, that people think that way instead of that person aligning with you and saying, hey, why don't we work on this together? And it really encouraging you to balance your energy out, which is to talk more, to be more open, to be... But this is what I'm seeing for you, legacy wealth. Let's talk about the number 29. Let's talk about the number 29 for just a second. Because some of you all have absolutely been on jobs where you were not fully appreciated. But you got to find out what did you learn about yourself in that. And like I say, what I'm seeing here is legacy wealth. I see somebody celebrating outside of a new home or refinanced home or a building or some sorts. 
I also see people around you being exposed. Remember, we're, we're moving towards a full moon. Here's the, here's the cool thing about exposure. Let's look at it at the upside of being exposed. When people are exposed around you, right now we have Pluto that's retrograde also. This is a time to declutter because Pluto is a death rebirth planet. When people are exposed around you, do you get upset about it? No, not really. You don't even nurture it anymore. You just take this knife and you cut the relationship off and you just keep on moving forward, right? People who may have been liars, manipulators, gaslighters, whatever. So often people are focused on the physical, the, the person's skin color, their uh, or their race or their nationality or their um, whether they're a man or a woman. And I would never this no. You got to focus on the spirit of the person, and of course, you all are air, you all are earth signs. Excuse me. So that may matter to some degree, but also what matters is the fact that you all are Virgos. And out of your sister signs, that's the Capricorn and the the Taurus, you all are the easiest in terms of really tapping into your intuition and knowing that your intuition is on point. There are some instances where you need to make sense of it. It makes needs to make logical sense to you. But at the same time, you all are starting to see this. You're starting to see how highly intuitive you all are. Number 29s are highly intuitive means that you are here to develop undeniable faith in your gifts and trust in the goodness of your soul. Yes, 29 broken down is the number 11. Also, 2 plus 9, 11. A gateway of information flowing through to you. So right now, your primary focus should be on your money. Yeah, that's it, really. No, you don't, shouldn't even be overthinking it. <laughs> your primary focus should really, really be on your money and your soul tribe. Your soul tribe could include... Uh, um, Fam members of your family, blood relatives, but they can also include people around you, you know, like people that, you know, are on your same frequency. Yeah, they may not even look like you. They may not look like you. So, yeah, you want to continue vibrating at a higher frequency. That's how you get the best out of life. You don't want to be a person who is so used to, so accustomed to drama and problems and stuff around your life, in your life, that you just feel like... Gosh, it's too quiet. <laughs> I've decluttered, so let me see if I can go go pick up some drama. Let's go get myself involved. In some, you don't want to do that. Here we have the two of wands, right? So this right here lets me know that there's much expansion coming your way. Matter of fact, you can go ahead and start spinning the globe and decide where you want to go because you have a lot of wonderful things happening your way. The fool card is attached to um, the planet Uranus, Uranus, which is Aquarius is ruling or one of their ruling planets. So this is where you want to be in full, that full mode. If you have Aquarius in your chart, you want to go pull your full birth chart and see what you have in your chart. But if you have Aquarius in your chart and you've been influenced by an Aquarius to some degree, it's time to really live a little. I mean, for real, just sometimes, well, if the fool was in reverse, it would mean it was reckless, right? But it's not in reverse. It's upright. So this is where you want to just fully just be free. Just, you know, celebrate your uniqueness, celebrate sudden change in your life, celebrate all these wonderful things that's happening for you. Plus, some of you all have amethyst. If I'm, I don't know if you can see it. Let me see if I can pull this here. See this amethyst? Yes, some of you all have amethyst. Amethyst actually resonates with your, um, it resonates with your crown chakra. So if you don't have any amethyst, go get some. I see you all manifesting a great deal of money, right? And of course, money is not your primary motivator because money is a resource like people and time are resources. But again, this is where you want to remove the blindfold. This is where you want to see all the spirits around you. What can you benefit from all the spirits around you? What is it that you can benefit from all the spirits around you, right? Whether they're balanced out or out of balance, what can you benefit from all the spirits around you? That's why you want to take the blindfolds off because that's where the power lies, right? You've been investing in yourself, and so now you want to see the fruits of your labor. Yeah. You don't ever have to worry about, you don't ever sit around and wait for somebody's karma. You don't need to do that. <laughs> for what? It's a waste of time. It's a waste of energy. Right now, you want to focus on numero uno, which is you. Focus on you, 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 and you. What did you benefit from those relationships? Because you got a lot of wonderful things that's happening here. Like I said, you have Saturn, which is Aquarius, is in Capricorn's ruling planet. So that's retrograde right now. Sun never goes retrograde, right? So this is where you're absolutely living your best life. Some of you all need to just go outside in the sunshine, just sunbathe, 
remove all that stale energy from your spirit and literally live your best positive free life what you see here what you see here that's all similar is that their hands are raised right all of them have smiles on their faces. They look relaxed. They look relieved. They're not overthinking anything. They're not judging anything. They're just literally balanced out, living their absolute best lives. Divine masculine, divine masculine, divine masculine, and divine feminine balanced out. Nice, 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 nice. And that's how you get to your money and your security, right? Yes literally living your best lives literally living your best lives out loud yes building your spiritual strength yes building your spiritual strength so many people miss out in being prejudiced when it comes to race when it comes to sex when it comes to preference they miss out on the best parts of life. I, won't, I don't want to be associated with this person. I don't want to be associated with that person because you're looking at the person's sign and you're looking at the, what the person looks like on their outer shell. Instead of looking at the inner shell, you're building your spiritual strength so that you'll be able to tell this person right here, they may not do things the way that I do, but I see value in this. And especially if you're in a leadership position, okay, if you're in a leadership position, you want to know how to bring out the best in people. Because again, that also plays to your money and your security. So all of these things are happening for you, Virgo. So again, you don't have time to wait around for somebody's karma. You just know that it's going to happen in the time it's supposed to happen. Right now, you're focusing on your legacy wealth, continuing to invest in yourself, manifesting a great deal of money, traveling, you know, buying your new property or investing in your new property and focusing on you, like doing your, um, like I said, letting the, letting the luminary, the moon, which is a luminary, expose everything within yourself and around you and look great. <laughs> <laughs> continue to build your, your strength. And so, again, once you declutter, and I'm talking about the planet Pluto, which is retrograde right now, you don't want to fill that space back up with more worry, more more overthinking, more. That's like taking out the trash and then bringing the trash back in your house. Overthinking is trash. Being judgmental is trash. All those things are trash. It's like putting the trash out, waiting for somebody to come pick it up and go put it in some dump or whatever, and then going back to pick that stuff back up once it's been removed from your your spiritual house and your physical house. You're not going back to pick that stuff back up anymore because that's going to be replaced with money. It's going to be replaced with travel. It's going to be replaced with property. It's going to be replaced with you getting your power back. So why would you want to go back and pick it up? That's what I have for you, Virgos. Have a great one. Bye.